August 31st, Thursday, 2017. It is day 224 in the Donald Trump White House regime. Hurricane Harvey wiped out about 40,000 homes. And now Donald Trump wants $6 billion to rebuild Houston. Now, that's just a starter plan, mind you. I'm sure they're going to need billions and billions of more dollars. So this is what they're estimating. Between 30,000 to 40,000 homes in Houston have been destroyed. And you can imagine many, many more have lots and lots of damage. Well, I'll give the federal government this much. They may not be able to do anything correctly. Just about everything they do, they do it incorrectly. But I'll tell you one thing they can do very, very well, and that's push a button and create money out of thin air. I mean, there's not a problem on this planet that the federal government cannot correct by pushing a button. I mean, they could literally push a button and give you a trillion dollars. They could rebuild Houston into the biggest, mightiest city in the entire planet. It would only cost about two trillion dollars. Why not? It's coming out of thin air. It's just all fake money. Why not? And while you're at it, make sure the FEMA official gets that huge pension. He needs a big pension to retire on. If we do a Google on Donald Trump today, we get about 285 million results in 0.85 seconds. So we've already talked about Donald Trump requesting the initial, yes, this is only the initial $6 billion in aid. It's not a loan. It's a grant. It's aid. You know, hey, just push a button. So there are some new developments coming out of the Robert Mueller investigation. I thought I would share them, share them with you. You see, Donald Trump has been making it clear to the world that he can pardon anybody he wants. And that was kind of putting a damper on the Mueller investigation. But they found a way to get around the Trump card. And uh, the... Here's what it is. You see, turns out that the presidential pardons only work on federal crimes. So what they can do, what Mueller and the team and the FBI and all these guys can do, they'll just use the state prosecutor to go after the underlings. See, they're trying to pressure the Trump underlings to flip on the boss. They're treating this like a mob investigation Trump's the mob boss, and they're going after the little guys to flip on the big guys. So anyhow, this kind of takes away one of Trump's whole cards. It takes away his Trump card that they can actually use the state prosecutor to put the uh, low-level criminals in jail if they don't flip on the boss. I mean, it's a big development, actually. New York crime families, I tell you, and that does include the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel. So, what's the news on Steve Bannon today? Apparently, Donald Trump is talking to Steve Bannon behind John Kelly's back. (laughs) Unbelievable. When John Kelly is not looking, Trump is calling up Bannon. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with uh, Houston? I mean, do do I give him as much money as we give our friends overseas? I mean, what am I supposed to do? Because I can tell you without a doubt... That the one thing Bannon would tell him is make sure you give Houston more money than we give BB because if BB gets more money than Houston, well, those guys, those those real Americans are just going to rip you a new you-know-what. So I guess he'll be on the phone more often with Bannon. The thing is, is what's going to happen when John Kelly catches him on the phone? Now, that's what I want to know. Well, well. Ed Jared Kushner's had nothing but problems, him and Ivanka, since they've been in Washington, D.C. I mean, always looking to steal money from the overseas investors because of their clout, selling power and influence. I mean, Washington, D.C. has been tough on Jared Kushner and Ivanka. But here's a, I couldn't miss out on a story like this. Here are the eight reasons that Jared and Ivanka are useless and detestable. I mean, I mean, I guess we could use some stronger words. Useless, detestable. They're okay, but I, me personally, I like slimy slumlord. I mean, that really puts it down where it should be. Slimy slumlord. 
Sorry, son of a... Okay, let's get started here. Well, number one, they're kind of jerks. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. Matter of fact, they're not kind of jerks. They are definitely jerks. I like this story at the end here of number... It says here, the chief of staff asked Jared and his team what they were working on, and he told Reince. He says, we aren't getting paid. What the fuck do you care? I think that Jared is a real asshole. I mean, he when he's got, he got a billion dollars, you know, I guess you are. Ivanka doesn't like her nickname, Princess Royale. Yeah, she's really a princess, all right. Number three, their inflated sense of self-importance, lack of political experience, and the inability to recognize the fact makes them universally disliked in Washington. You might as well say the whole country, universally disliked by the whole country. They have no real pool. I don't know about number five. Number six, they've lost credibility. I mean, did they ever have credibility? I mean, you know, but they lost credibility with Silicon Valley, and that's probably what hurts them the most. They love those billionaires over in Silicon Valley. They are loathed by the D.C. society. I mean, they're not only hated by the Washington, D.C. people. They're hated by the whole damn country. I think it's only the Chinese. Only the Chinese kind of like Ivanka for some reason. I think because they taught the daughter how to speak Chinese. I mean, that's it. And their brand is the most important thing to them. That's really the icing on the cake. That's all they care about is their brand. And, of course, here's the joke of the day. Ivanka and Donald Jr., Eric Trump, removed from the White House after the mother wins a 25-year custody battle. (laughs) Yeah, that's the joke of the day. So let's get on with the news. I mean, what goes up must come down. I mean, I'm going to tell you that, yeah, whatever goes straight up normally comes straight down, but that's a pretty big number, Bitcoin. I think it passed 4,800 at one time. I don't like the way that chart looks. I really don't. So let's wind this segment down looking for some more interesting news. Like I said, when it rains, it pours, and they got another storm, Irma, who Irma could turn into the monster hurricane. Wouldn't that be something if it went into the Gulf? I mean, we won't even talk about that. New evidence reveals that James Comey is working for Hillary. Really? Does that surprise anybody? The uh, diplomatic war between Russia and America is heating up. And August payrolls prepare for disappointment. I mean, there's only 96 million people, 96 million Americans out of the workforce. I mean, what are they worried about payroll for? The alarming militarization of the American police. It's all about controlling the masses. See, if you got 96 million people without a job, you're going to have to control them somehow. Donald Trump thinks it's a good idea to give the police rocket grenades, grenade launchers, tanks, yes. Give the police all the combat gear they need because, you know, 96 million Americans out of work is not a good thing. And it looks like Hurricane Harvey might have fixed the over-inventory problem. The car dealers had. Now, here's something. This is just another reason that we don't need the federal government to come save us. I mean, each community has many, many strong, able-bodied men to get out there and get the job done. I mean, we don't need the federal government and FEMA to come in and save our asses. We could save billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. Just let, just let the local the local help get in there. I mean, able-bodied young men that don't have anything to do. Remember, lots of men don't have a job. They got nothing to do. The Pentagon has a job for them, though. The Pentagon wants to send you to Afghanistan. They don't really want to tell you how many people, how many troops we have in Afghanistan. Apparently, Obama was even lying about it. But, you know, he probably didn't, they probably didn't even know how to count back then. They don't, why worry about how many is over there? Why worry how many trillions of dollars we're spending in a black hole? Can you imagine trillions and trillions of dollars spending over in that desert over there? They're worried about Houston. 
People are worried about rebuilding Houston when we put trillions of dollars in a black hole over there. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense unless you've got some people stealing a whole lot of money. But where would they take all that money when they stole trillions of dollars? I mean, where would they put it? Where would they hide it? I think one day we'll find out. And could you imagine how many factories we could have built in America with the money that we sent over there? The money we wasted in that desert, can you imagine how many factories we could have built with that? You know that factory I'm not going to tell you about, the factory that did not break ground today, that factory? We literally could have built thousands of factories with that money. Jeez, I'm probably, I'm going to talk about it till I get blue in the face, until these career politicians wake up. Look at these layoffs. You talk about, look at this, Humana. Carrier. Look at the numbers here. I mean, they're just every day. We haven't looked at this in a while. Look at this. I don't even know how to pronounce that name. International Kellogg Disney ABC. Well, that's a good thing. ABC laying off people. That's a good thing. But look at this. Gordy's. A thousand layoffs possible. Gord. I mean, this is just insane. They're lying to us about the economy. I mean, this is. It's a welfare state. We are literally living in a welfare warfare state. You either work for the military industrial complex, you either have a contractor's job, or you're on welfare or a servant. It's bad out there. It's bad, but they don't tell you about it. They won't tell you, but I'll tell I will not lie to you. It is bad, but I believe I have I have optimism. I am optimistic that one day when the whole thing comes crashing down that we will rebuild out of the ashes. Well, at least I can hope.